great topic we have, changing the focus of your action planning efforts. And when we think about focus, we think about what are the goals and objectives? What do you want to see or do different that you want to see in your action planning efforts? Today there will be several opportunities for you to chat. We're going to have one poll, but several times to chat, so get ready to type quickly. When we ask to chat, we're going to get some feedback from all of you that hopefully you can learn from each other as we, we will share those chats out to everyone who has attended. We'll share that at the end. And so when we think about what's the focus today, what is that focus on action planning? Oftentimes, most organizations would say, well, it's to increase engagement scores. Yes. Others will say, no, 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 we don't want to just increase engagement scores. We want to track completion of action plans. That's also a good, uh, me good measure. We think of these as lead indicators of success. But I do want to tell you that there is an elephant in the room. Very few people talk about it, and even fewer focus on it. Now, everybody on this webinar probably knows that there are many moving parts to an engagement initiative, and I've just listed some of them here on the screen, starting with leadership buy-in, employee buy-in, getting a methodology, a good instrument, collecting data well, getting your norms, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Lots of moving parts. However, but there's one important thing that's missing, and it, it's between the completion of action plans and linking results to business success. And I'd like to propose that that elephant in the room is behaviors need to change. That is, not only leaders, but associate behavior needs to change to create that more engaging environment. Now, whether that's better coaching and feedback, better listening skills, more open to new ideas, more teamwork, or maybe more closer ties to working across teams, there are many behaviors that need to change before you actually do get results. So as you think about that, we have a poll. And what we're going to ask of you is, um, we're going to ask, what percent of your groups actually, of the groups that you work with if you're doing engagement surveys, which percent are actually create and complete action plans that change behavior? You're honestly seeing behavior change for the better, um, and we'd like to get that what percentage. So of all those on the session today, could you record your, your um, what approximate percentage and hit submit? And as we collect that poll, we're going to start seeing, uh, we're going to share you the results at the end. They're coming in. Great. All right, we're going to close the poll. Let's look at those results. Wow. 40, uh, about less than half, but 41% are at 50%, and then it shrinks from there. Another 35% are at 20%. So I'm seeing over three quarters or at least three-quarters of the people, about half or less of their managers are changing behavior. And that, I don't believe, is good enough. I think we can do better. To do that, because otherwise, how are you going to get positive results? You might get complete action plans, but you don't get positive results. So I'm going to take a playbook out of, of a page out of the innovation playbook. And what we're going to ask is, what else can you do I'm sorry, first I'm going to say, you know, you're not alone because uh, this is a question in one of our, uh, in our norm database. In fact, it's the lowest percent favorable item in our high performing companies. These are companies that have strong financials, they're leaders in their industry, they increase engagement year over year, and they struggle with this question. And in fact, in their case, only 51% of employees agree that they've noticed a positive change in employee surveys. So that is a, a challenge that we're going to work on today as, uh, as we look at that, how to create that positive change, how to change the focus. So now we're going to take that, that page out of the innovation playbook. What can we do to change behavior? And I'm offering four strategies today. Better manager support in coaching, 
creating action plans that work, expanding your organization's perspective on engagement, and making personal comments. Now, I believe there's a lot we could talk about regarding coaching our managers, but for those of you that attended the last webinar, that was the topic. We talked about a number of techniques, and you can, they're listed here, from the power of reflection all the way to asking powerful questions. If you think you could be helped by having bosses of managers have more effective, uh, be more effective in their coaching, or maybe your HRBPs to be better coaches, we encourage you to review that recording, and you'll see a, a listing of the URL to access that recording at the end of this session. So today we're going to focus on the other three areas, starting with creating action plans that work. Now, before we look at those ways to, to make action plans work, what I'm going to do is just ask a, this will be a rhetorical question because I want to make sure that we get in everything we're talking about today, but what types of action plans have you seen that don't work? I was going to have you enter it in the chat panel. If you do, we'll collect those data. But think about some of those. And as I looked at our clients and some of them that share, what about action plans that are off target? It's an action plan, all right, but it's not hitting the goal of, of low engagement. Others are simply not helpful. Employees roll their eyes that this action plan is something that is uh, to be used. Or the one I, that's my favorite, and in prior companies I've actually experienced this, the last minute action plan. The message comes out from the engagement committee or the HR person, hey, you've got two weeks left, you've got to complete it. So they complete it last minute, not really changing any behavior, it just is the check a box. All awesome way, reasons why sometimes action plans don't work. But let, now let's take a look at some of the, uh, oh, we've got some chats in there. Ones without measures for success, awesome. Yes, if you don't have a measure for success on your action plan, you're not going to be helpful. Uh, another, uh, that was from Dave. Laura says don't work with manager leaders. Uh, they don't work when the managers don't own all the follow-up. Engagement's a team effort. Perfect. Absolutely ways of why action plans sometimes don't work. So as we talk about that, let's look at a couple different things to how to create some of those more effective action plans. Now the first tip is something that could be actually added to every action planning form or ex describing of an action plan. And that is, ask that manager or the team, how will completing this action plan create a more engaging environment? So they actually have to specifically tell you how it's going to do that. Because if you're trying to, if you're doing an action plan, if you're saying we're going to do an off-site uh, team building, but you're not telling them how this is going to create that lasting, sustainable, higher engaged one, it's not going to work. If there's not a clear line of sight to more engaging environment, then actions are just actions. So just consider that as a really put people on the spot that they really have to have an action plan that, that really puts, that connects the dots. The second thing that I'd like to suggest, and then we'll get into some example questions. The second is to use SMART to record the action plan. And I'll bet almost all the folks on this webinar have companies that use SMART when they look at objectives and goals. Make sure that, the, that in this case the action plan is specific, that it's measurable, as our the comment from before, uh, attainable, it's relevant, it's time-based. Link back to your performance management system uh, lot language can really augment and support both. They support each other. Now there are some managers that might say that that say, oh wait a minute, SMART is so hard. Why do you put SMART here? It's so hard to get things that are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. That's the point. If you have those, it really makes the job easier as you're looking, did we complete it? Did we move the needle? Is it something that's more likely to increase engagement? So consider incorporating that SMART uh, metric into your action plans. Now let's take a look at two common survey questions that are often worked on. How do we know they're worked on? 
Well, we had said that the, that the lowest uh, favorable item was that there wasn't a lot of action from the past survey. These are the next two in our norm database of high-performing companies globally. The first one, how do you rate cooperation between different units or departments within the company? How would you rate it? It's that idea there isn't enough cooperation. The other one is, a, is one that some people don't even ask the question. In comparison with the people in similar jobs in other companies, I feel my pay is fair. Compensation is tough. So we're going to look at these both head on and try to come up with better action plans that work. So let's look at the first one. How would you rate cooperation? And I'm going to get your help with this because if, if I'm, uh, if the clients we work with is anything, any indication of yours, I would like you to chat. What possible action plans would you suggest to create that sustainable behavior change? What things might work that you see? So I'll give you a second to enter in maybe the, some of the best practices that you've seen in your organization, ones that help that cooperation. To me, this is a great action plan to work on because it, it's a daily, it can be a daily drain on people if there isn't the cooperation they'd like. And Mark, I'll point out here that with this new version of WebEx, the chat panel doesn't pop up automatically for us. So uh, for those of you that are having difficulty locating it, um, there's a chat icon in the upper right-hand side. Go ahead and click that chat icon and you'll be able to uh, type in a chat for us. Thank you so much, Scott. You know, as we look at those, and I started to think about some of the things that clients have said, whether it's peer shadowing. If you have two departments that work together, maybe you assign back and forth people just going and seeing the world from the other person's perspective or the other department's perspective. Or maybe allowing associates to work out issues themselves. Give people to learn from what other departments are doing. Uh, Ciara, perfect, perfect as an answer, as an idea for cooperation. Uh, maybe if you think managers are the issue that they're just not seeing eye to eye, both managers need to commit to better cooperation. Maybe it's an it's a action plan that should be worked on jointly. Um, norm, cross-functional working groups which resolve corporate issues. I love it. So you get them both working on a common goal. Success breeds confidence and trust. I really like that. Dave, weekly meetings with key department leaders with specific agenda and outcome notes. Great way to get people talking, get people to know one another. It's so much harder to have a, a disconnect when you really know people. It's so much easier to pick up the phone if something isn't going well. So those are great ideas. All hands are joint meetings. Perfect. Ways to share that, that vision and roadmap. Great ideas. Even more fun action plan could be to organize interdepartment events. What a great way. Get a couple of departments. Maybe a competition, a friendly competition. Maybe if you're into sports, nice way to do that. Phenomenal. Again, but it's about thinking about what will it do to change behavior going on. So if you're doing things that open up better rapport, better communication, it will create that communication, change the behavior, very much increase that cooperation. Now I've saved the, uh, maybe the toughest one for last, I think most people would say. It's so important to many organizations, especially in retail or in other industries where there is downward pressure on wages, you just can't pay, more, pay people more. Uh, so, you know, if, you know, in comparison, uh, I feel my pay is fair, and sometimes this gets very low scores. In the high-performing companies, though, it's above the uh, exchange. It's about 53% of people agree with this question, so 47% don't. But if this question is low for you and your organization, you can certainly let managers become more, you should have managers become more aware of what salary studies are done what HR and compensation is doing and, and how they're trying to make sure that their, their pay is fair, whatever you're trying to, whatever level you're trying to pay at. But you know what? Trying to convince employees of fairness based on that logic, that rationale is often a losing battle. They're not interested in the salary structures because they're just not feeling that their pay is fair. And you know what? I don't have a panacea here, but I'd like you to consider something that I believe is happening more often than not. 
You'll have a supervisor who hears about pay, and what are they saying to their employee? They're saying what they think is the right thing to say. I tried to get you a better raise, but the powers that be wouldn't approve it. And you know what? What are they doing? They're throwing management under the bus. Very difficult to excite people. In fact, what, you're, what they're doing is they're telling their people they're underpaid. They're worth more. I tried. I believe you're worth more, and yet management isn't. So what do you expect people to respond on a survey? How do you expect them mentally to feel about this? So what I encourage is the behavior change here might be in supervisors if this is happening. So managers of supervisors being able to have conversations, talk with their supervisors at leader meetings, and say, what should our answer be? Practice. How can you respond? Well, number one, you can respond by saying you've taken a look at the salary surveys and you've seen them, but then have them speak from the heart. Have them talk about that they feel that for the kind of organization you are and the competition and such that the pay is fair, you can also give your supervisors some more tools in what other career development or career growth opportunities outside of pay are available. There are great ways to have a better discussion and make sure your managers practice that discussion as opposed to leaving them out on their own when they make up the comments on their own that might be hurting the process. I'd like to now switch to the second um, uh, strategy we're covering today, and that is expand your organization's uh, perspective on engagement. And I'd like to start with chocolate chip cookies. Why? Well, I love to cook, and I must confess, many years ago I was making cookies from scratch, and everything was going well except that I forgot the salt. Uh, just a half teaspoon, it was hardly enough. Oh my gosh, they were hard, they were like rock, and they didn't taste that good. It tasted kind of horrible. And you know, engagement is a lot like salt, spices, and herbs. Engaged employees enhance every aspect of an organization's livelihood. I bet you believe this, but does your entire organization know about that, believe in it, and talk about it? And here's what I mean. Any activity or process related to people, that's about everything we do, isn't it, should make the connection to engagement. Think about that. All different types of activities should have a connection and show the linkage of more highly engaged and motivated employees will drive and have a more, you'll, you'll get more success. For instance, leadership development. Every leadership development session, leaders should be asked to bring their engagement reports with them. The last survey. Why? They should be able to look at the objectives of the training, compare it to the scores, and even the items on the score, and say, if I improve my score, if I improve my skills based on the objectives of this course, what will it impact? How will it impact the engagement of our, my organization and the whole organization? What a great way to make an extra connection they're going to sit up in their chair a little straighter and learn more in that session. Now, I'm going to talk a bit about some of the others because all of these, it, it, they impact. But while I do that, I'm going to ask you to chat. How do you reinforce the importance of engaged employees outside of your engagement initiative? So you can chat that in the chat panel that you've now found. Great. But think about some of these others are so important. Change management is all about communicating, making sure people understand what's changing and why. That's a key element of engagement is keeping informed. Innovation. Most of your organizations have a focus on innovation. People are more likely to share ideas if they feel their ideas are welcomed, if they feel like it's an engage, if they're engaged, if they're motivated, if they feel that their ideas are appreciated. One that some people, the next one is one some people don't realize as much as if you have a Lean or a Six Sigma initiative of quality improvement, the only way those kinds of imp those areas improve are if you actually are getting suggestions for change, if people are volunteering how to make it a better place. 
if you are being more engaging, if that environment's more engaging, I'll guarantee they're going to be more willing to share those great ideas. Let's take a look at some of the comments that are uh, that have been up here of uh, chat uh, of any of engaging outside, or is that something that's hard? Is that hard to do? I mean, retention, selection, and hiring. If you're hiring people, you hire a new person. We had brought a new person on board in in April. And one of the first things in that selection is to talk about how, how engaged our people are and how engaged we want them to be. I love that uh, Laura talks about engagement scores for leaders are included as part of the talent reviews. Wow, you, look, you, you went right to promotion succession planning. I guarantee that if I'm, if I'm in a position to elevate people, I want to look and see what kind of an environment they created at different levels. If I have a history of someone who is not creating strong engagement in their areas, the last thing I want to do is to promote them to a higher position because they're not going to be demonstrating the kinds of, uh, of culture and environment that we would like. Now, let's look. So, so um, are you making engaged employees that issue or topic? Think about that and how you can do that and how your team, how your leadership team, how HR can do that. Uh, in, different, uh, in different avenues around talent. So let's look at the third strategy. I look at making, make personal commitments. Now, I don't mean that you at, on the phone here make, uh, this isn't about your personal commitments, but this is one I'd like to talk about leadership. Because I think this is something we've all heard, and it is so true. People don't leave companies, they leave bosses. Isn't that true? How about you? Have you changed jobs because of the boss wasn't the kind that you um, that that really engaged you or uh, allowed you to do your best? Maybe didn't give you the career opportunities you needed, and so on. Leaders at all levels have more influence and impact on engagement than any other factor. So if that's true, if leaders have that impact, what can we do to help leaders help them? change their perspective, give them better ways, change their behaviors that's going to increase engagement. And here's a perspective that rings true from the authors of The Leadership Challenge and Encouraging the Heart, Kuzis and Posner, Thought Leaders in Engagement. In their book, they talk about if leaders want to higher levels of performance that come with trust and collaboration, then they must demonstrate their trust in others before asking trust from others. Here's the key point. When it comes to trust, leaders ante up first. Now, we all know trust is a big part of engagement, but what I'd like to, what I'd like to propose is one additional step in the action planning process, and it has to do with anteing up first. So, when the four managers share results with their teams, they should review the results to look for an item or a category that they personally could or should work on. And if they can't find one area that they can do a better job in, they can't talk with their manager about their boss about one thing that they could do better, then their scores better be 100% because all people can look in the mirror and say, there's something I can do better. So now, if you take that one thing that you could do better, Create an action plan on that item. So this is a personal one. This is one for leaders to take personally. Take that action item, and then as you start that action planning session with your group and you're sharing that result to the team, share your personal commitment to act or change. So it's an item that isn't the team's item. might even be a different elephant in the room of a behavior that the leader has been demonstrating that hasn't been engaging. But think about all the possible benefits that that really generates. It gets managers personally committed. They're out there telling people, you know what, I haven't been good at setting agendas for our meeting, and I'm going to do that to make us all better prepared, getting them committed. It gets managers' bosses committed, especially if bosses are having conversations with those managers about what would that one thing be that you could implement that, that you'd want to change first. And it shows employees that their managers ante up first. 
Think about how much easier that is then for employees in that action planning session to now when the manager says, what else of the whole survey, what other thing can we do as a team to create that more engaging, that more engaging environment? Gives them far more permission to say, here's something we can do. Here's something the team can do. Here's something we can work with another team to do. Gives them a far more um, effect on that. And if any of you have done something like this, I'd love to see the chat. Love to see your suggestions on it. Or if you'd like to chat whether it's something that uh, um, would, would work in your organization. It certainly does create more accountability for managers and get the conversation in the right place. Getting people thinking about behavior change, not just completing action plans. And with that, I'm going to open this up for questions. And any questions that might be out there, I'd love for you to uh, put them in the chat panel or the Q&A panel. If you want me to any questions, and then uh, in a minute we'll be putting up the, uh, um, the uh, code for the HRCI credit. But let's see if there are any questions that uh, any of you might have that we can, we can kick around. I see one question. It has to do with how do I get my senior leaders to create a requirement or more of a mandatory of action planning? I guess I'd like to, to share from that perspective uh, the, uh, the question of what do senior leaders expect from the engagement initiative? Asking them, what do you expect this to do? If all you want is a measure, to track like a temperature check, the challenge is that you're building expectations. So having, asking them what do they expect? What are they hoping to get from this? Or what are the implications if we ask people for their input and they don't respond? If you don't do some type of action planning at some level, it doesn't have to be at the supervisor level, but it certainly can be at, um, it has to have people seeing that there is, that their results are taken, then it's very difficult to understand the, the, to build a business case to measure engagement at all because people will say, yeah, they asked my opinion last year and they didn't do anything about it. So any other questions that have come in? Any questions, please chat any if you'd like. Absent any, let's move uh, on from there. Uh, question here, Mark, and we get this often. Uh, just a reminder that the copy of these slides in the recording will be sent to all attendees after today's webinar. I had a couple of people ask that. Uh, and also don't forget to head over to uh, www.tmswebinars.com and uh, you can register for past recordings and upcoming webinars as well. Excellent, excellent. Yes. In fact, we talked about uh, that one question about um, about, uh, about uh, buy-in of managers. Our first webinar in this series talked about commitment, and that is one. Did get another question, Andrea, thank you. How do you maintain the momentum of action planning once it's begun? Wow. Uh, you have the hurry of getting the results out. You've uh, shared it with the group. You've uh, probably put it in a newsletter, seen your team has sent it out. It's now out with each manager. I'm not going to tell you there's an easy answer. It's a number of little things that people can do to maintain momentum. It's about keeping the communication up, sharing success stories, uh, capturing best practices. Any organization that has a number of units, whether they're retail units or branches that are similar, sharing a best practice from one to another is a great way to do it. One way that we've created some momentum with our clients, they've created some momentum, is to use what we call best-in-class norms, where they, we identify the top 10% of, of units and provide norms of those. And for some organizations, we share those unit names. We say these are in the top 10, so that if you're having trouble in an area, you may want to contact one of these. Great way to build that collaboration between peer groups 
and find out how to move the needle. Another question from Kate, how long after you send action plans uh, out should you follow up? Ooh. Um, there's, that, that varies in some ways by culture and what you've done in the past, I would say. I'll also enter this, is that if you give people too long, they will procrastinate. Not all people will, but many will. So find that balance of, of the amount of time necessary to avoid uh, vacations and busy peaks and valleys, but also don't go too long. Get them to get that action plan in place because until an action plan is, is approved and out there, no behavior change is happening. So get it out quick. Get them to move quicker, and don't just spring that on them, but share it even in the very beginning of the session that we want to really make a difference. So when you get your results, one month from then, we expect that there are going to be some action plans. So if you want to set that appointment of having a meeting, get that on your calendar now, um, to maybe a, a week or two after you share, after, we, after you'll have your results, so that we really can push those action plans in real time. Great question. Great way to build that sense of urgency. Because if you give them too long, it really says, this isn't that important. It's a low priority. So with that, I want to thank everyone for being on this session. I'm going to remind you that our fourth session is coming up August 6th, uh, the recipe for real business impact. This one is going to have to do with kind of like, okay, we have our engagement results, but how do we really link it to the business? Senior leaders want to know how is this impacting the business. If you can get, if you can show leaders that engaging employees drives impact, you'll get their attention and you'll get their heart, not just their head, to connect and you're going to have a much more engaged organization and a more successful organization. So thank you. Thanks, everyone. Uh, you can always reach us via our website if you have any more questions for Mark. Um, also, tnswebinars.com, you'll be able to contact us through that as well. Have a great rest of your day.